Dear friends, in this video lecture, we will show that the limit of Thumi function exists at every real number and the limit is 0. And for that, first we recall the Thumi function. Okay. Okay. So, first we introduce the Thumi function. And for that, uh, I will consider a set A is open interval 0, infinity. And the Thumi function A is defined on A to R. Okay. Now, if we take any point x from a, then either x is a irrational number or x is irrational number. Okay. If x is irrational number, then uh, we define f x as 0. And if x is rational number, then obviously x can be written as the ratio of two integers. Say m by n, where g c d of m comma n equal to 1. Okay. In that case, we define f of x equal to 1 by n. Okay. So, the target of this video is to show that the limit of fx as x tends to alpha is 0 for every alpha belongs to a. Okay. And here we note that f of alpha is 0 if alpha is irrational and f of alpha is strictly positive if alpha is rational. Right. So, the Thumi function is continuous at every irrational point in A and discontinuous at every rational point in A. Okay. Let alpha be any number from A and we consider the interval alpha minus 1 comma alpha plus 1. Okay. Let A not be a fixed natural number. Okay. Our Claim is there are only finitely many rational numbers in alpha minus one comma alpha plus one with denominator less than n naught. So, for that, let us consider a set a n naught minus 1. This is collection of all natural numbers such that, that m by n naught minus 1 belongs to a. Okay. That is, we consider those natural numbers such that the distance of m by n naught minus 1 from alpha is strictly less than 1. Okay. Observe that here the value of m is strictly less than 1 plus alpha multiplied by n naught minus 1. That means this set a n naught minus 1 is finite. Okay. So obviously the set a1, a2, a3, a n naught minus 1 are finite sets. Okay. So, their union is finite. Because finite union of finite set is finite. And this implies our claim is true that there are only finitely many rational numbers in the open interval alpha minus 1 comma alpha plus 1 with denominator strictly less than Right. 
So we observe that in this open interval alpha minus 1 comma alpha plus 1 there are only finitely many rational numbers whose denominator is strictly less than n naught. Thus we can obviously find a delta positive such that such that the interval alpha minus delta comma alpha plus delta contains no rational numbers whose denominator is strictly less than a naught. Right. That is there is a delta positive such that the open interval alpha minus delta comma alpha plus delta contains no rational number whose denominator is strictly less than naught. That means all rational numbers lies inside the open interval alpha minus delta comma alpha plus delta has denominator e, which is greater or equal to n naught. Okay. We need this observation to proceed further. Okay. Okay. Now we choose a epsilon positive. Okay. Then by Archimedean property, there exists a natural number in naught such that the reciprocal of n naught is strictly less than epsilon. Okay. So the reciprocal of all those natural numbers is strictly less than epsilon which is bigger than n naught. Now from the above observation we can construct a we can construct a delta positive we can construct a delta positive such that the interval open interval alpha minus delta comma alpha plus delta contains those rational number whose denominator is strictly or equal to n naught okay thus if we choose a x from that interval alpha minus delta comma alpha plus delta then the modulus value of f x minus 0 is same as mod of f x okay and that value is actually 0 if x is irrational okay and 1 by n if x is rational and x looks like m by n okay since that interval alpha minus delta comma alpha plus delta contains only rational numbers whose denominator is it are equal to n naught. So obviously, if x is rational here, then n must be greater or equal to n naught, right? That is, one by n is greater or equal to one by n naught. One by n naught is equal less than epsilon. Okay. Okay. Thus, for any x belongs to open interval alpha minus delta comma alpha plus delta direction a, the mod value of f x is strictly less than epsilon. Okay. Okay. So what we observe? We observe that. For any epsilon positive, we can construct a delta positive such that if x belongs to the delta neighborhood of alpha intersection A, then corresponding the mod value of if x minus 0 is strictly less than epsilon, right? And by definition of limit, this is nothing but limit of fx as x tends to alpha is 0 ok we observe that if alpha is irrational then the functional value of f at the point alpha is 0 and if alpha is rational then by definition of f 
the functional value of f at the point alpha is strictly positive, right? So from these two point, we can conclude that f is continuous at every irrational point inside A, and f is discontinuous at every rational point inside A. Okay, thank you.